Hey Jacko, in today's video I'll show you how to highlight the text in DaVinci Resolve, be it one line, multiple lines and I'll show you how to do it in multiple ways. Now let's get digital. So the easiest one that you might want to do is in the edit page, I simply have an image, so this is an image, this is currently highlighted in the fusion page but what you can do if you have an image, let's go to effects, type in solid put this on top of the image, you'll want to change the color in the inspector to the highlight that you want, maybe you want a blue one, click here to get the size, you could also go to the settings and adjust the zoom, so you then put this over the text that you want to highlight, then we'll change the composite mode depending on the background of the image and the text, you'll want to change it, usually you'll want to use overlay or multiply, but this will depend on the actual image. Maybe in this case I'll use soft light. Now if you have an image at an angle, you can also adjust the angle, but what we want to do now is to animate this, and to do that we'll use the crop function, now in this case we'll be using the crop right, we'll animate it, maybe something like that, and you would have to sync this to the audio if you want to have something synced to the audio. Now if you want to use this as multi-tool and multi-line, you would simply hold alt, put the clip above, then you would position this down, adjust the size again, and maybe position it like so, so if this was being red, this line would finish and then this one would start. So you can do this a bunch of times, and in this case we would also need to adjust the width, or the height in this case, now you can do it easily like this in the edit page, what you can also do, if you have your own text, you'll go to effects, type in text, and you'll want to use the text plus node, so in this text I'll just type something in, so you have some text, you'll want to change the font, maybe this one for now, adjust the anchor, and in the layout I'll adjust the position, just so we can see it. Now the cool thing about the text plus node is that you have the right arm function, But if you want to have the text visible, you'll actually want to make a copy of it, so leave the bottom one as is, hold alt and make a copy above, then we'll want to go to the shadings tab, select element, the second one, enable it, you can give it a name if you want, it doesn't matter what it is, you'll want to change the appearance, this will be a fill, leave this as character, now if you have a text, a line and a word, it may look ok at the moment, and I'll show you what the issue is, and you can also round it down, but what you do need is to extend the horizontal line, in this case 2 is not enough because we still have gaps, so let's increase that, and I will lower the extend vertical so we have some gap in between the lines. And now what the issue will be, let's see, we will use the right arm function to enemy this, so I won't go all the way to the beginning, I'll go here, keyframe it, go to here and keyframe the ending. Now I'll go maybe to this spot, let's go back to the shading tab and change the level to text. So this is one issue that you can have, if you choose line everything will be colored, if you use word also not what you want, that is why we use character. So this is the second way how you can highlight text in the Vinci Resolve in the edit page. Now if you have an image, let me just take a fresh copy of it, let's say you want to highlight something and we have an image, but we want to do it in the fusion page. Now in the fusion page we also have a couple of options, the first option that I've done in the edit page using the solid, it's similar to this one if we use rectangle and the background node, connect them like so, adjust the rectangle, 
and we can also position it. We don't have to because we'll use a transfer node. So add a transfer node. And because I've added a transfer node, we could actually move it around. So maybe that's what I'll do in the rectangle. I'll default the center back to the center position. And I'll move the transfer node. And in the transfer node, what you want to do is adjust the pivot point because we will be animating the size, but we'll be animating only the X value. So we have to uncheck the use size and aspect and we'll animate only the X size. Currently, this goes to the center position. So that is why we have to adjust the pivot point, which is this green X, and we'll adjust it to the left side. And now when we use the X size, it goes from left to right. The only thing now that you need to do is to animate this. So I'll go to frame 10, reframe the size as zero and frame 20, keyframe it as one. Now in the background, we'll change the color. You can change this to anything that you want. And then in the merge node, we'll adjust the apply mode. The only issue I have in the fusion page is that you actually have to click on the apply mode to see it, what it looks like. So it does take a little bit longer to find the one that you want. In this case, I think screen looks okay. And this is how the animation would look like. Now we could copy this composition a bunch of times and put them down to get a bunch of new lines. But what you can also do is use a duplicate node. Now in the duplicate node, you can simply adjust how many copies you want. In this case, I would need three copies. I will have to offset the center. So offset the center. And in this case, I also need to adjust the height. So we have some gaps in between the lines. So this is what we have. At the moment, the animation stays the same for all the lines. So to fix that, we'll use the time offset and we have to use a negative value if you use a positive one. So this depends on the keyframe that you start because I've started at frame 10. I have to set this to frame 10 just to see the final line. And this will now go in reverse. This is also something that you may want to do. But if you want to go from top to bottom, you'll use minus 20. Well, you have to use a negative value if you want to go top to bottom. This will depend on the animation that you have. So this is how that could look like. Now another highlight that you could do is maybe use mask paint node. Mask paint. Display it on the left side. You'll want to use polyline stroke. So this applies to the whole clip. If you don't use the polyline stroke, it will apply to only the frame that you are currently on. So you can make a selection like so. Also add the background node and connect it with the merge. Change the color of the background and adjust the apply mode. Now in the mask paint mode, you can also go to the brush controls, choose the rectangle one, maybe adjust the size, and you also have the opacity if that is what you need. But now you have to go to the stroke controls and adjust the right arm function. Now the mask paint is a little bit more flexible because you don't have to do this shenanigans. You can just copy the mask paint node, position it down. So I've positioned it down using the center Y position, but now I need to extend it. I'll simply click on the node. Now, if you don't get the handle, like I have in this case, let me just copy this node again. Position this one down. And as you can see, I don't have the handle, even though the node is selected. So what I'll do is I'll simply click on this one and click on this one again, and now I have the handle. And once you do have the handle, so this is the handle, as you can see, it's too long. I want to shorten it. You will have at the top an option and you want to select this one, modify only. As you can see, this one is no good. If I now want to adjust it, I can't, it made a new point. So click modify only. 
And in this case, as you can see, I could also maybe adjust the size a little bit. Now the issue remains the same and I've actually lost the animation on this one. So let me make a quick animation. So in this case, all of the animations are the same. And to fix that, I would go to the keyframes Enable this one, show only selected tools, so I don't have all of the nodes displayed. Now only the selected node is displayed. I'll leave this one as is, this one is the top one. I'll select this one, expand this, click this icon, zoom to fit. I see the keyframes on this one, so I'll expand it. Select the keyframes, and I'll simply position them over. And I'll do the same for this node. So that's how I can also adjust that. And the last option is also using a text plus node, which is exactly the same as it was in the edit page. So you could connect it, type something in, as you can see, you also have the right on function and you have the shading tab and you do exactly the same as we did in the edit page. And now if you want to get fancy with your shapes, you can also do that. You could maybe introduce some fast noise. So this one is now using the fast noise. In the noise, you could adjust the details the contrast, the brightness, and of course the scale. Adjust the color to what you want. You could also have this animated. If you adjust the see through it, as you can see, it's moving. And what you can also do is use a displace node. So this mask will go to the background of the displays, the fast noise will go to the foreground, and then this will connect like so. And in the displays node, we'll want to set x, y. As you can see, you can adjust the refraction, which is what you may want to do. You'll have to, of course, then adjust the position. And also, in this case, we have to change the color back again. So connect this one, like so, so we get some color back. And in the merge node, we could now adjust the center position to put this back to how it was. And you could also get something fancy like this. Now these are just some of the options that you could use to highlight the text in the Winch Resolve, be it one line or multiple lines. And if you found this video helpful, you know what to do. I'm Simon, and until next time, Jacko. Keep it digital.